Welcome back, everybody, to another Pico CTF 2022 Capture the Flag video. Hop over to my computer screen here where we are getting into the action. This is the forensics category, and we're looking at a challenge called STG, excuse me, ST3G0, which looks like Stego, which does not excite me. The challenge tags for this say steganography, and if you aren't familiar, steganography is the act of hiding a message inside of another message. It's trying to keep some data secret, oftentimes by just masking it or making it camouflage in some way or another. This is in the forensics category, so it might differ a little bit, but if it's steganography, a lot of times the steganography category in Capture the Flag gets a bad rap because oftentimes it leads to very obscure, esoteric, kind of guessy stuff so i might understand why pico is kind of maybe just throwing one challenge in here for this i hope uh anyway let's w get this file down and see what we are up against uh this is an image file pico.flag.png it is simply an png a portable network graphics file i could use something like i of gnome to be able to open this up eog and this is simply the pico ctf logo with a little transparent background here now, uh, if this is a steganography challenge, you might be able to do a couple different things. Uh, if folks are familiar with Steg Snow, you might be able to see, oh, does, what, is, what does Steg Snow actually do, by the way? If I, what is that? Could you use something like uh, Steg Hide? There are t way too many tools to kind of guess and check with steganography challenges. Steg Hide is one where you might be able to extract data out of a image. Uh, granted, Steg Hide, uh, I believe only works with JPEG images. Steghide, if you, if you want to check out the uh, use case for Steghide, it's a steganography program where you kind of have to tell it, hey, I want to extract and then give it a source file with tag SF. Um, that's one of the things you kind of have to hit the I believe button on and like, hey, can it extract secret data that might be hidden some way or another in this file? Well, we could do simple things like strings. Truthfully, there's not going to be a whole lot in here. Uh, you could use foremost, you could use binwalk, but no, it is going to be hidden in one way or another. I believe Steg Hide will only extract data out of um, JPEG images. Uh, you, uh, Steg Hide often uses a passphrase. Uh, however, sometimes, excuse me, challenge authors will just use an empty password, which is extremely frustrating. And sometimes you don't even have to guess that guess, guess. Uh, big dislike, right? Other things that might be when you're given an image file is that you might have some data hidden inside of a least significant bit. Now, the, what I mean by that is that, sure, you know how binary and hexadecimal stuff and bytes are represented for computer files now, right? You have plain text, right, which is the printable ASCII characters that could be displayed and readable with strings or just in a text editor. But for binary files like a computer program or a binary or an image file or a media file like a video or sound file, uh, all of those are compressed into those hexadecimal bytes. And those are D words, as we've discussed, like double words for all those things. Now, when you have uh, a byte, it's represented as eight different bits, at the very, very end of that is a least significant bit, and that's, oh, it's the one or the zero kind of at the end of the line. Now, if one of those were to be toggled on or off to actually represent data, it's not going to really make a difference for the original image itself or the sound file or the video file because it's the least significant bit. It, it might slightly super tiny make a tiny little tweak and change to the color, but you and I, with our stupid human eyeballs, wouldn't be able to really tell the difference or know, oh, that has been tampered with or changed. Uh, so that least significant bit is something that might be able to uh, uh, be used in steganography across multiple pixels. Oh, a one or a zero has been flipped to spell out a message in one direction or another. Now, this is just a guess. I could be totally wrong on that. But if that's the case, there is a utility called ZSteg. Now, ZSteg will actually handle a lot of this, uh, and, and Stego Veritas might do the same thing. Is Stego Veritas something that we could work with? Steg Veritas? I don't know. Is ZSteg something that I could get from the repositories? No. How about Stego Veritas? No. Steg Veritas, if I'm forgetting the name? No. Okay, whatever. Let's go look at ZSteg. ZSteg if you aren't familiar, is one of my absolute favorite uh, steganography tools because it's like a, 
Superman power. Uh, it's it's written in Ruby, right? So it requires Gem as the package manager to be able to install this thing. Uh, if you're working on Kali Linux, you very likely already have Gem installed because it is going to be something you use with Metasploit. Uh, and I will sudo Gem install so I can get this thing. And I believe it will just slap it into my path. So hopefully I can now run Zsteg. And that's all it takes. Zsteg as the opposite of Stegheide will only work with PNG files or bitmap files, kind of as you noted in the repository here. Now, if you just trust me, if you just press the I believe button on me, uh, knowing, hey, this least significant stuff that I just told you about, you could have it try, oh, should I use the least significant bit, like the zero all the way at the end, or the most significant bit, the zero or one all the way at the front, or vice versa, whatever direction you're looking at these things in. You could do a lot of different things with Zsteg. But you might be able to just throw the kitchen sink at it as well with the tack A for all. This spits out a whole lot of stuff, but I'm going to cross my fingers and hope this is where we're going to find the flag for this challenge. Oh, there's a whole lot of noise, a whole lot of shenanigans at the very, very top of this file. The, the beginning of this output, part of me, I, I thought I saw something in bright red. And that is our flag. <laughs> <laughs> Pico CTF, there is no spoon with the dollar sign stego thing, weird trailing thing that might have maybe clued us in somehow. I don't know. Maybe that's supposed to mean the end of the message if you were trying to write code to do that manually. Look, I don't like stego. I don't know a lot of people that do. Um, when you can use Zsteg, trust me, it is overpowered. It's incredible. It's godlike. Uh, Zsteg for the win, and I really want to recommend that for folks. Uh, just to get the steganography challenges over with and out of the way. Totally throw Zsteg at it and call that challenge done. Hey, before I do, let's go ahead and Zsteg tack O. Mm, I guess tack A might do some stuff with it. So let's use like tack LSB, see if it finds it. Oh, does it use examples on that yeah probably here let's or maybe it needs it at the end c stack lsb yeah that's all it takes so then we can grep tag oe pico ctf colon dot slash uh or dot star color equals none and we have now churned out our flag in a quick and easy get flag script that we can now finish and call that challenge done cool Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I know that was a stupid Dumbo one, but such is steganography. Quick and easy win, quick and easy W. Uh, Z-steg for the win. Really hope you enjoyed that utility and totally use it all the time when you're just randomly handed a PNG image file and you don't know what to do with it. It's always worth just throwing it against all your tools and your toolkit and building out that arsenal. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all this YouTube algorithm. Thanks, like, comment, subscribe, support, etc. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.